The start of the new 2026 Formula One regulations is just around the corner. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how the aerodynamics of these cars could potentially behave. For those of you that are new to my channel, I was an aerodynamicist for Mercedes for the 2018, 19 and 20 Formula One seasons. I now work as an aerodynamics consultant, designing packages for race cars and OEMs in all different classes all around the world. What we're going to be looking at today is a CFD or computational fluid dynamics analysis of a F1 geometry that was built to the 2026 Formula One regulations. Now, this particular geometry was designed many months ago, so it's a little bit out of date with respect to the current rules. And I'll try to highlight in the video where there's features that would differ with the actual F1 cars that we're going to be seeing launched in 2026. This car geometry was supplied to me by Willem Toet, and he got the geometry from a guy called Mark Lane who drew the geometry initially. So thanks to Mark for coming up with this geometry that we can run the CFD on, and thanks to Willem for giving me the geometry to run. One of the things that's always tricky with these types of speculative geometry runs is that the geometries that we're going to be using are very different to what the actual F1 cars are. Now, each car varies between each team, but also all the cars that we're going to see launched by the teams have been developed extensively with many, many, many man hours in CFD and wind tunnel development to produce their final form. So they're going to have much more detailing, much more complexity, very different concepts. And as a result, the aerodynamics of the real cars will be a fair bit different to what we're going to be running today. What we're running today is just to kind of give you the vibes of what's going to be going on with the rule set more than any specific aerodynamics that we're actually going to see. What it will also do is that when I'm doing my start of season analysis, you'll be able to relate the scribbles that I'm drawing on images to what the actual flows look like. So it's a bit helpful as an illustrative device. I've only run this geometry with a relatively simplified and basic CFD simulation because there's no point burning resource on a high fidelity simulation for a geometry that's not even real. So from that perspective, this is going to have some CFD artifacts and a few other things going on that aren't indicative of real life flows. But it's the sort of thing where it's probably going to be one of the better resources out there for trying to understand the basics of the flows. So this is the geometry that we're working with. It's as it was provided to me, except I went through and infilled this body in here to give us some internals. And I put in a, a dummy engine block in there that we used back in the day on the Perrin F1 car for my very early F1 videos. Apart from that, it's a fairly straightforward and basic car. Uh, it uses inspiration from a few features of the current generation, like you can see this undercut side pod here. Uh, we've got the downwashing top with a little bit of a, a channel there, like we see on some of the current cars. It tapers in a little bit more to fit the top of the diffuser there. That's a little bit different to current. It's got that downwashing engine cover. Now you can see here, this is the regulations box over the top of it. You'll see that it roughly follows that, but there's been some changes. You can see the nose is a little bit out. The floor leading edge slopes, whereas on the newer box, it's now a straight cut across it. Uh, you can see some penetration outside of the boxes just there. Some slight differences on the floor edge and things like that. Uh, so you can see it's a little bit different to the latest version of the rules, but it's in the ballpark. Now, there'll be a few differences here in terms of technical details. Now, when you look at compared to last year, you'll see that we've got uh, three element front and rear wings, which is a little bit different to what we're used to. But at the floor edge here, one thing that I would expect on the new rule set is that we'll have uh, some form of daggers coming out here. So the floor edge is going to go straight across and we'll have some form of daggers sticking out, much like we used to have on cars back in the day. But this is available in a rules box down here. Also over here, you'll see that this particular uh, vertical vein here, this is not what they have on the new rule set anymore. There's now a horizontal vein across there is the new legality. So that's another thing that would be a little bit different. There's also some freedom on the new rule set around uh, this corner here where you can do a little bit more in this corner than you could currently. And the new rule set also has a little bit of a deflector thing on the rear of the diffuser sitting in this sort of region. Now, those things we'll deal with on another video, the specifics of the rules. For now, we're going to be looking at the aerodynamics of this car. And some of the things that are going to really drive the aerodynamics being different to the old cars, this in-washing barge board area just here, that's somewhat mandated in the rules. It will look a little bit different to that when you see it on the actual cars. 
but there is a, a degree of inwash required in this region. So that's something that's going to be a feature of the new rule set. We've no longer got the uh, the deflectors that used to go over the top of the wheels and downwash there. Those don't exist anymore, although there would be a spec FIA cake tin on the front and the rear uh, that's mandatory part that we don't have here, but that will be different on the actual rules. And like I mentioned, that diffuser upwashing winglet, which we can talk about in another video. Now, this model has no radiators modeled in it. I was very lazy here. I literally just did an inlet port there that then goes along and the air rushes in here, and then there's a, a volume and a cavity that the air can then come out of the louvers. So that's not quite physical, but again, it'll get the job done. Same thing with the cake tins. They've got an intake and outlet scoop, uh, but they do not actually have anything that is restricting the flow in there. So there's no disc geometry, there's no caliper, nothing like that. So really simplified model, just here to give you the overall vibe. So to start with, here is a 3D model that is output from the CFD run. So you can see that what we've got here is we've got pressure contours all over the 3D model. Uh, and what you'll see is that we've got some high pressure on the top of the rear wing. We've got high pressure on top of the front wing. And then underneath, we've got low pressure underneath the rear wing and underneath the front wing. Now, it's worth noting here that we don't have a huge amount of suction on the floor. I would imagine that on a real F1 car on this rule set, that we would have quite a lot more suction on the floor here. We'd have a lot more vorticity at the leading edge generated by the daggers, uh, and the diffuser would probably be making a whole lot more suction than this too. If we look up further here, we can see that we've got a very high pressure region just here. Uh, like I've talked about on a lot of the previous year's cars, we generate a lot of pressure in this region here, which can help with the management of the mid wake. Uh, and then you can see around this corner where we have the corner out and the flow has to turn and go back, we get a lot of suction along here. Basically this entire box that's between this in-washing barge board and the side pod is all quite heavily pressurized. So in some ways that's handy for managing the wake by suppressing the wheel wake and pushing it a little bit further outboard. Of course, the barge board is there to force that wake inboard. And that is to reduce the overall width of the wake of the car that should theoretically help with the following. Aerodynamically, you don't really want it to come in, but FIA is obviously very interested in making the following better. Now, in terms of what that looks like in the pressurization, what I've got is I've got some ISO surfaces here of pressure. So basically these surfaces indicate what it looks like in terms of the overall high pressure regions. These are only on the high pressure side. So basically you can see the whole top of the front wing and whole top of the rear wing are highly pressurized. And that area in front of the side pod that I was telling you about is also carrying a lot of pressure on it. So these are all regions of pressure on the car. High pressure on vertical surfaces that are facing up is good. So in front of the, the rear wheel on the top of the floor is good. Underneath the floor is bad. But if you have a look, generally speaking, the pressure will be on top because we're gonna camber uh, and rake up all our little aero devices to give us that pressure there. Now, what's more interesting though, is the wake profile of the car. So if you have a look, what you can see, if we've got the front tire wake here and you can see that sort of how that travels along the car and we've got the rear tire wake back here. Now you can see this front wake as we go along the car, basically the upper wake gets kicked out a little bit, but the mid wake gets drawn in by that barge board. So you can see that in washing barge board is pulling that wake inboard. So instead of having the wake come all the way out here and get blown out there and then slowly make its way back in where you can get a little bit more wake out the back here. It gets pulled in inwards by that barge board, which is again, all about narrowing the overall wake of the car. Now looking at the overall wakes of the car, you can see the center line of the car is not in a particularly healthy way. Uh, and I'll explain in slices a little bit later why that's happening. There's also some indication of separation on the rear wing. You can see the separation bubbles up the top again, I don't know how physical this would be. Like I said, it's very basic CFD that I'm running here. And also I know that my CFD recipe, generally speaking, separates more aggressively than the real world does, but that's just showing you a bit of separation up there. And this is giving you the overall vibe of how the aero on the car is looking. But generally speaking, if we were trying to assess the aerodynamics on the car, 
Uh, it's very pretty to look at how it looks in 3D, but that's not actually a development focused approach. We would normally instead use slices of flow as we're going along the car. So that's what I'm gonna to transition to now. But before that, we can have some shameless self-promotion. Did you know that I also do aerodynamics courses? I've got a FlowViz course and a race car aerodynamics course that's been around for a few years now. People generally seem to love it. We've had a number of university students that have used it to get into Formula One, and there's been a bunch of race teams that have made their cars faster with it. The courses are ideal for university students amateur racing teams, and professionals looking to upskill more into aerodynamics. For more details, you can go over to courses.jkfaero.com. Now here, we're basically just looking at the flows as we're traveling along the car. So starting at the front of the car and working our way all the way to the back of the car. What we're looking at here is a quantity known as total pressure or CPT. Uh, this is basically a definition of flow energy within the flow. So if we lose energy in the flow, which is what I always talk about as losses, we have a reduction in total pressure or CPT. So starting at the front and working our way rearwards, you can see that we are at the front wing here. And basically the front wing is generally a pretty clean device. We don't lose too much energy on it because it's the first thing in the car, we don't want to lose too much energy. Now in this particular case, we can see that we're getting some junction losses over here where we're at the front wing end plate. This is just because the junction here is not particularly tidy. Now we'll also see that we've got a vortex spooling up here and another one spooling up down there. And those two vorticities are basically just as we roll around the end plate. You can see there's another little bit of vorticity that comes off the bottom here. And watch how that progresses. So that will spool up into a vortex and then that is running alongside the tire and then that drags in the lower wheel wake along here. We then have, as we get to the rear of the tire, the tire wake right there. And you can see we have this inwards and undercut shape here where this is the lower tire wake and this is the mid tire wake and this is the upper tire wake. Now on the real car, I would anticipate that this would be a bit better because A, the team's gonna be managing it better than our particular example has, but B, there'll also be a spec FIA caked in deflector and that is going to probably manage the flows better than nothing at all. Moving further rearwards, you can see this is the start of our barge board here. So you can see that's our barge board there and a little bit of the floor that goes forward from there. So you'll see that that barge board is sitting in the middle of the mid wake. It sort of splits the mid and lower wake around. Now, as we go back to here, like I said, I would anticipate that we would have some floor leading edge daggers that would be outwashing here. It would basically be driving the flow out that way and also spinning up some vortices just there that will add some suction to the underfloor and generally improve the performance of the floor the whole way along. And that would also help to kick out this region of wake that we see here that's sitting on the floor. It will kick that out that way because we've got more outwash there. So expect that to be quite different on the real cars. So we go further rearwards and you can see that the underfloor is looking relatively clean through there but there's a lot of loss and tire wake that's right near the outer edge of the floor. And again, this would be better in the real world. Uh, this, as it stands, is going to be quite bad for performance further rearwards. Now, one other thing I wanted to note while we were at, up here is remember how I always spoke last year about the chassis side losses? What you'll see is that these losses are here. Now, watch how they develop. They go down there and you'll see that I've got a vertical inlet here, much like what we've been talking about in previous years, and you'll see it eats up all those side losses. So you can see we get clean flow on the outboard side of the side pod and the cooling inlet ingests some of that loss. So th again, this is a mechanism that I've talked about many a time, but now you can actually see it in action. So here we're entering the side pods and you'll see we've got quite a lot of clean air above the side pod. We've also got a fair amount of clean air in this region here. Now these two areas are bits that we can divert towards the rear diffuser further rearwards with this particular style of bodywork. Now it's worth noting, this style of bodywork is what works on the current rule set. There is zero guarantee that that is the best configuration on the new rule set. And I would expect to see some very different bodyworks appearing. So we go further backwards along here. You can see that clean air coming down from the top and you can see we get to the diffuser and our big bits of clean air are what's going to be sitting on the top of the diffuser and to the side of the diffuser. Now, if we look a little bit higher up, you'll see the louvers. So, so these are the louvers just here and you can watch the losses spill out of those and you can see there's a little bit of loss that is resulting from that just here. 
And that is what's going to be uh, a bad time if we get that hitting our rear wing or our beam wing. The beam wings this year are pretty small, so less sensitive to previous years. But we would want to thread this between the beam wing and the rear wing. So we go further rearwards and you'll see that that particular loss sits basically in between the beam wing and the rear wing. If you have a look, you can see that right here we have a blob of loss that is from the wake of the front tire further upstream that's made its way down here that's going to hurt our diffuser and i want you to watch what happens with the vorticity and everything that gets shed on the edges of our rear cake tin deflector so we go further as we get some big lossy vorticity um, we're getting a lot of loss on the back side of that deflector in general and there's two sections there's the lower section which ends up merging and drawing in the lower wheel wake so that's real bad and then we've got the upper section which is going up and hitting the rear wing end plate now some of that is being kicked up by the air from our outlet of our rear keg tin and that's pushing up into there but that's not something that i would want to target so if i was doing this as a car that i was designing i would be trying pretty hard to get this wake to sit in a little bit more i'd clean up this area here i'd try and put the, the caked in exit in such a way that I wasn't going to put losses straight into my rear wing end plate. And similarly down the bottom, I would be trying to make it so that this vortex structure here is not drawing this that way. I would be trying to control that because sucking in all this tire wake into the diffuser is not gonna end well. It's worth noting here too, that the center line of our diffuser is really, really clean. Now on the new rules, they, they have a strike that can go here that would, be using this air a little bit harder and we'd get better characteristics in terms of suction and in terms of extraction from the diffuser if we use that air because now that we're at the rear of the car we don't really care if we're making a whole bunch of loss uh, as long as it's not anything crazy uh, we can use some of that energy up to make more downforce so we get all the way to the back and you see the rear wings pretty vanilla uh, like i said there's a bit of separation at the top uh, and this is the flow field that we're ending up with now this particular car that we've got here is not exactly doing a flow field that I would think is good for a following car. Uh, certainly in the center, this whole region here is gonna be really bad if that hits your front wing. Now, there is something to be said for the fact that we don't have too much wake out in this region here. Uh, so if you weren't directly behind the car or close, uh, it wouldn't potentially be that bad. And obviously this bottom, wake is moving inwards on both sides which means that a few car lengths back this may have collapsed a fair bit and started to move up and could be a bit less of an issue but certainly with this specific flow field we've got here this is not ideal now there's a few things that could be improving this in the real thing one was like i mentioned that fia deflector that's going to sit on the rear end here we'll discuss it in another video but basically that should help upwash the, a little bit more up high and that will maybe draw the wake in a little bit more at the bottom so it will suppress the outer wake uh, it's also worth noting that the teams will naturally try to improve the tire squirt and the lower wake in order to get performance and that will mean that my giant lossy blob of a wake that i've got here will be less of an issue than what i've currently shown you here anyway i'm hopeful that they'll give an improvement in overtaking uh, compared to the previous regs, but you can never be 100% sure. It's worth noting too that uh, generally speaking at the start of each regulation set, the cars are underdeveloped, their wakes aren't being forced out very hard, uh, and they have a lot less downforce, so naturally they follow a little bit better along. Uh, as the regulations go on, I will assume like every single season that the overtaking will get worse and worse as the cars get more and more developed. And that hopefully gives you all an idea of how the aerodynamics on the new 2026 cars will roughly work. Well, that's all for this analysis video. If you liked it, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel, as well as turning notifications to on so that you get pinged whenever I happen to upload a video. Leave a comment below on what videos you'd like to see next from me, and hopefully I'll see you next time.